Hello again, everyone. Brian Rogers, CFP, alongside Michael Donnan today. And Michael, to 90% of our clients, you're a man that needs no introduction. But to the rest of us, uh, Michael is, other than Bill, the longest serving wealth manager here at Aegis Financial. And he also serves on the investment committee. So today, thanks for joining us today, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. So I'm filling in for Bill today. Bill is out enjoying his anniversary on a trip. And then after that, doing some training down with Raymond James in Florida. Always odd that training seems to be a January item for him. So uh, good for him, but he's out enjoying the warm weather in his family. So we appreciate that. Uh, last week, we saw a rally come up here in the market. What pushed the market forward and why did it pop? So yeah, Mike, we had a lot of data that came out on Friday, uh, specifically looking at uh, jobs and wage growth. So the jobs, the best analysis that I've read uh, labels it kind of a Goldilocks report, whereas it was just right. Uh, the The job growth uh, came in better than expected, but slightly lower than the previous month. So it's, it's still showing strength, but also uh, showing signs of slowing down. Uh, the bigger one, though, that was, um, it, it surprised to the, the good side was wage growth. And the reason that so many people have been watching that is because that's uh, one of the big contributing factors to inflation. So as wage growth slows, so should inflation. So where do we go from now? What are we seeing over the next few weeks? Yeah, so we had another batch of data that came in this week. Uh, again, the CPI report was was this Wednesday. Um, no surprises there, which was which was good. There was a lot of people nervous around that one. Uh, another jobs report came out at the end of this week. Uh, again, no major surprises there. Uh, so really, the the shift now goes to earnings, and that's it's one thing that has been lacking recently. There's been so much focus on the Fed and what they're doing. Uh, kind of uh, the company's earnings has been lost a little bit. So this week we're heading into earnings season. What are we expecting from from those reports and that information coming out? Right. It really it really starts off today with the the major banks. Um, so there will be a lot of focus on the fourth quarter earnings, which companies are reporting how they did in the last quarter of last year. Uh, but the the bigger bigger influence I think is going to be on the forward looking guidance, right? Because the we all know what the Fed is trying to do. The Fed is trying to slow the economy. So now it's going to shift to what do companies think for this year? Uh, because again, the stock market is forward looking. So it, it wants to know what are the companies expecting and how is that going to affect their stock price? So to wrap up on earnings, we're going to see them come back a little bit lower than they have in the past, but that's to be expected. Now, looking forward to 2023, we're shifting more towards value over growth. Why is that important in 2023, and why is that shift coming? Yeah, we started that shift last year, and really it, it boils down to there's a lot of questions that, that remain. Uh, you know, how how is the Fed going to continue to fight inflation? Uh, how is employment going to come in? Is employment going to remain strong as the economy slows? A lot of uncertainty, and uncertainty equals risk. Uh, so in times of high risk, high uncertainty, what a lot of investors shift their focus on is uh, really more stable, more safer investments, if you want to call them that. So in general, they're, they're looking for companies that return profits to shareholders, and those are through dividends. Uh, they're looking for companies that kind of have stable revenues. Um, they're not those companies that are going to grow five times as fast as the market. Uh, so really, you're you're looking for more of those stable investments, and that's what we see on the value side. You, you see those higher dividend-paying companies. And really, one way to think about it is think about your uh, November and December budget versus your January budget. I know not, not everyone is a, is a nerdy budgeter, but you, you can use those three months to kind of define what our – discretionary purchases and cyclical purchases versus what's more your staples, your defensive. Um, you get into January and you think, oh, we better slow down the spending a little bit. Just went overboard on Christmas, did you? <laughs> exactly. So, so think of those purchases that you made in December and think of, all right, we can cut some of those. So those ones are going to be more your discretionary, your cyclical purchases, Whereas stuff like utilities, you're, you're still going to pay the electric bill, the gas bill, the cable TV, all of those purchases more on the defensive side. 
So again, we, we think in, in terms of uncertainty and, and of this volatile market, we think in, investors are going to continue to go to those types of, of names and those types of companies because they're a little bit more stable in times of turbulence. So that's a good explanation of value. Now, on the flip side, we see growth as a place investors want to be when the market's expanding rapidly. Another big piece of information that came out last year was the passage of Secure Act 2.0. came out right at the end of last year. The major change in that was for people that are 72 or older, your RMD age has now been moved to 73. So for, if you're not collecting RMD, age 73 will be the new uh, age for those people. Yeah, and that's, there's a lot of other provisions in the Secure Act 2.0, not nearly as impactful as, as the original Secure Act from 2019. It's certainly something that we're, we're digging into. Uh, we've got a, a presentation that we're attending today, actually. Um, so it's, it's something that updates will be coming from your wealth manager. So really to wrap up the video, uh, not much has changed in our intermediate term. We, we continue to believe that uh, the start of 2023 is going to be a, a volatile kind of sideways market. But long term, looking three, five years out, we continue to be optimistic and, and see the current, uh, current market entry points as, as attractive. Yeah, so volatile markets are going to be a part of 2023 here. So it does certainly invoke a strong emotional response. If anyone that you know or you yourself have any questions, please feel free to contact myself, Brian, or the team here at Aegis Financial. We'd love to help.